Hello friends, welcome back to OIS. Welcome to the prelims test series discussion. We are discussing the Vision IAS prelims test series and we are discussing all the tests. So what we are doing is uh, we are using the summary of the solutions that is prepared by WAV IAS. So in this we try to summarize all the solutions of each and every test of Vision IAS. So these, so these summaries will help you to revise the solutions multiple times. So the same document we are using for the discussion. This is part 3 where we will cover from question number 71 to question number 100. So let us quickly begin. 71st question is on India Pharmacopoeia, Indian Pharmacopoeia. Pharmacopoeia, if you see, it is important to develop Swasthya and Samrudh Bharat to maintain the standard quality of our medical products. The government of India created separate, dedicated, autonomous institution in the form of Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission to deal with matters with respect to timely publication of Indian Pharmacopoeia that is the so this is nothing but it is an official book of standards for the drugs which included uh, various uh, other important ones in terms of second schedule to the drugs and cosmetic acts 1940 to specify standards of identity purity and strength of the drugs imported manufactured for the sale stocked or exhibited for the sale or distributed in India. So with regarding all the drugs that are found in India, there are certain standards that have to be maintained. These standards, they will be mentioned in this pharmacopoeia. So this commission became fully operational from 1st of Jan 2009 as an autonomous body. It is fully financed by the government of India and uh, under the administrative control of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The mission is to promote public and animal health in India and promote highest standards of drugs for the use in humans and animals. The major objective is to develop comprehensive monographs for drugs to be included in Indian, Indian Pharmacopoeia, pharmaceutical ingredients, pharmaceutical aids and dosage forms and all. And also to develop monographs for herbal drugs, both raw drugs and extract formulations, their form. And to accord priority to monographs of drugs included in national essential medicine list and dosage form, take note of different levels of sophistication, accelerate preparation, certification, distribution of IP, Collaborate with pharmacopoeias like PH Euro, BP, the US pharmacopoeia and so on. Then to harmonize with global standards, to review the existing monographs periodically, organize education and research activities, publish national formulary of India for updating medical practitioners and other health professionals and act as national coordination center for pharmacopoeia vigilance, pharmacopoeia vigilance programs of India. These are the various things about pharmacopoeia. Next, 72nd question, this is with regarding to the effects of pollution on plant microorganisms. The pollution have a huge impact not only on the animals but even on the plants. High concentration of SO2 produces necrosis which is the death of tissue, the blotching of broad leaved plants, brownish discoloration of the tips of pine needles, chloriosis etc. Hydrogen sulphide in air causes leaf lesion spots or defoliation and reduced growth. High concentration that is 100 to 10,000 ppm of SIVO causes leaf drop, reduction in leaf size, premature aging, inhibition of cellular respiration etc. Hydrogen fluoride causes burning of tips of leaves, excessive dropping of bloom and fruit, promote seeds and small fruits, promote seedless and small fruits. Concentration of hydrogen chloride in air causes waxing glazing of leaves caused by collapse and plasmolysis of epidermal cells. High concentration of hydro hydrocarbons like ethylene causes dry sepal disease of orchids, decreasing chlorophyll and curtainers, the shortening of internodes, and lack of apical dominance. So the pollution has a huge impact on not only on the animals but also on the plants and microorganisms. So the sulfur, hydrogen sulfide, and the high ppm all of these causes all of these cause uh, uh, affect all of these affect the plant growth and even various microorganisms which are useful for the plants next formation of ozone gas so formation of for, for the ozone gas basically is formed by the action of uv rays on molecular oxygen and degraded into molecular oxygen in the stratosphere uv ray of wavelength less than uvb are completely absorbed by the earth's atmosphere. UVB damages DNA and cause mutation. It causes aging of skin, damage to skin cells, skin cancer, inflammable, sorry, inflammation of uh, cornea, 
snow blind snow blindness cataract etc the ozone which is generally in the stratosphere will be in the form of o, will be o3 this o3 will split into o2 plus o and this will combine with the other particles like the uh, fluorine and all which are present in the atmosphere so the, so the ozone layer gets depleted if you see this ozone in the stratosphere it is important for us but if you find the same ozone on the ground then it becomes a pollutant the ozone gas on the ground is a pollutant the sunlight plus uh, these nitrogen oxides plus volatile organic compounds they combinedly form this ozone on the ground okay <coughs> next the 74th question this is with regarding to the bio indicators so normally there will be lot of changes in the atmosphere bio indicators are nothing but the organisms which tell us or which show the changes that are occurring in the atmosphere that is called as bio indicator that means the the micro or living organisms okay their presence or lack of their presence they indicate something they show something they show some changes in the environment they indicate something that is called as bio indicator the living organisms like plants the planktons animals microbes that show the status of environment quality through their sensitivity example the coliform bacteria indicates water pollution due to fecal matter movement of catla and labio rohu fish away from their habitat shows water pollution due to industrial waste death of amphibian fish in the pond show eutrophication abundance of diatoms and echornia in water indicate pollution due to mixing of sewage in water growth of algal species like chara shows water pollution by organic and industrial waste so these are the various indicators next 75th question is on adaptation so adaptation is a morphological physiological behavioral attribute of organism it enables it to survive and reproduce in its habitat that means organism morphologically physiologically behaviorally adapting to the conditions which are different from its native condition and surviving over there and reproducing in that habitat in that new habitat is nothing but adaptation example kangaroo meet water requirement through its internal fat that is oxidation water is the by product of it it has the ability to concentrate its urine to remove excretory products thick cuticle on the surface leaf and sunken stomata to min- to minimize the water loss in transpiration can be seen in the desert plants they have a special photosynthetic pathway that closes stomata during a day and some desert plants like opuntia they have spines and the pho- and photosynthetically uh, the photosynthesis basically is done by the flattened stems so what it says is that for a organism or any organism to survive in new conditions or to survive in the conditions which are not conducive they will adapt themselves according to the environment they will change themselves so that they can reproduce and survive and live in those conditions that is called as adaptation and you have the allen's rule which say that the mammals from cold climates generally have shorter ears and limbs to minimize the heat loss that is allen's rule in polar seas the aquatic mammals like seals have thick fat layer below the skin that acts as insulator reduces the loss of heat and the microbes like archaebacteria they flourish in the hot springs and deep sea hydrothermal vents where temperature exceeds more than 100 degrees centigrade so this is this is about adaptation next nmc 2170 this nmc 2170 if tomorrow if it is asked in the exam just identify that it is india's first indigenous lithium ion cell uncovered by ola electric so nmc is india's f- nmc 2170 is india's first indigenous lithium ion cell high nickel cylindrical ola cell comprises of nickel manganese cobalt on the cathode side and graphite and silicon on the anode side so this is about this lithium ion cell of ola electric next 77th question is on the types of species endemic species the species that live in limited area like mountain lake or island and the ecological aspect of the place and biological characteristic of uh, living beings influences it has a very narrow range of ecological niche and need for habitat conservation is integral next is rare species rare species are as the name suggests they are the species which are not common the species are very uncommon they are scarce and infrequently encountered and is distinct from the term endangered or threatened endangered or threatened basically uh, means the species that the whose size reduced 
because of human activity whose size it, not only human activity because it might be because of any activity whose size let's say initially it is 1000 and this 1000 came to 100 then it is called either endangered or threatened but if, on the other hand if you see the rare species these species actually their occurrence is only rare it's not because of any condition their availability is only rare that means that it naturally they are v naturally their occurrence is very less that is rare species and flagship species on the other hand these are nothing but the species they are selected as an to act as an ambassador icon or symbol for a defined habitat issue or campaign or environmental cause so let's say uh, for for any for any event or anything if we have selected a particular animal of a particular region then that is called flagship flagship species okay next biopiracy so bio biopiracy is the unauthorized usage of any biological bio of any bio reserve of one country by a foreign nation the privatization and unauthorized use of bio resources by foreign entities which has pre-existing knowledge of rare bio resources it is theft or usurpation of genetic materials the plants and other bio materials by patent so without any permission let's say america is using some of the ancient uh, the american companies they are using some of the ancient ayurvedic uh, technology or ancient ayurvedic uh, knowledge they are using then that is called as biopiracy because without any permission or without anything they are using the uh, indian texts and uh, indian knowledge and that too sometimes even they will even uh, patent those things so that's a big issue okay <coughs> The use of indigenous knowledge of medicinal plants for patenting by medical companies without recognizing that knowledge is not new or invented by patenter. For example, turmeric if you see. So if there is any, if there is any uh, uh, wound or anything, usage of turmeric is very common in India. The American companies try to patent this thing. So this is how it happens. This is how it happens. So this this type of uh, biopiracy deprives the indigenous community to rights to commercial exploitation of technology that they have developed the agencies indulge in biopiracy uh, biopiracy legal claim uh, that is exclusive commercial right to plants animals microorganisms and genes commercialization of traditional knowledge on bio reserve bio resources patenting on biological resources and indian product like name Tamarind, turmeric and Darjeeling tea have been patented by foreign firms for different lucrative purposes. The Convention on Biological Diversity CBD is an international legal instrument for conservation of biodiversity, sustainable use of its components and fair sharing of benefits arising out of its utilization of genetic resources that have been ratified by 196 nations. It gives sovereign nations the rights over biological resources. Right. Next, 79th question is on acid rain. Acid rain or acidification, if you see, it is the precipitation, that means the rain with pH of less than 5.6. If there is less pH, that means it is acidic. If the pH is more, that means more than 7, in fact, that is considered as basic. Less than 7 means acidic, more than 7 means, uh, uh, less than 7 means acidic, more than 7 means basic. Right. Next, spring or acid shocks. The snow or ice which is formed on the lakes, they have much sul they have uh, much sulfuric acid. In springs, when the snow melts, the water enters the lakes. The sulfuric acid gets mingled with the water, making them highly acidic. So generally, the springs, if you see, which are formed when the snow melts, and this water entering into the lakes, they will have more. They will be more acidic, because why they will be more acidic is because the snow or ice generally have more sulfuric acid because of that the, the the water becomes more acidic and the gases that cause acid rain see last year also the, there was a question on this SOx the sulfuric acid the sulfur dioxides basically SO2 is sulfuric acid the fossil the fossil burning power plant smelting of metal sulfide ores Production of sulfuric acid in metallurgical volcan in metallurgical things, volcanoes, seas, and decomposition of organic matter, and the nitrogen oxides. 
so sox and nox basically they are responsible for these acid rains and wo and wo2 and to wo the fossil fuel burning okay they they are caused by this fossil fuel burning lightning biomass burning forest fire ocean and power plant all these are the causes basically these are the main causes of sox and that is sulfuric acid and nitric nitrous acid, nitrous acid if you see the harmful effects of acid rain on humans uh the bla- the bad smells the reduced visibility irritation of eyes skin the chronic bronchitis the pulmonary emphysema and cancer these are various effects and there will be effect on the soil because by the by uh, because there will be exchange of these uh, ions there is the exchange between the hydrogen ions and nutrients like cations like the potassium magnesium in the soil that causes leaching of nutrients make soil infertile so because of this acid what happens is that the nutrients will be lost from the soil and there will be increase in the ammonia in the soil due to decrease in other nutrients so the nitrate level of the soil is also found to decrease indian soils are mostly alkaline with good buffering ability so the impact of acid rain on indian soil is less and impact on agriculture if you see the acid precipitates on vegetation and this decreases the rate of photosynthesis so the plants will die this also retards the growth of crops the pea potato spinach broccoli carrots like they their uh, production will get impacted why because of the reduced rate of photosynthesis and uh, increasing of this acid in the atmosphere and the plants absorb cadmium from the acidified soil there will be high levels of cadmium in the plants and that that is very injurious to both plants and animals uh, the, because Uh, there will be this concentration of this cadmium in the food we all know this concept of bioaccumulation so there will be accumulation of this cadmium when the, when the food goes higher up in the tropic levels next the effect on aquatic life so these uh, because of the acid rain the ph of the water also changes the ph of these uh, rivers lakes and all it will change in a certain area this will directly impact the aquatic life the eggs or sperms of fish frog etc they are sensitive to the ph changes so they will die and also effect on terrestrial life if you see so this uh, this acid rain basically damages the cuticle of leaves and reduces photosynthesis cause leaching of uh, these heavy metals like aluminum lead mercury when they percolate into the ground water that affect the mi- microflora fauna and uh, effect on microorganisms also will be there because the ph in fact is very very important certain ph is very important for the uh, for these microorganisms to grow and survive and also the buildings and monuments they also will get affected because this acid rain will directly act on the uh, act on the material that is used in the baking of these buildings example taj mahal if you see the the there is discoloration of taj mahal this discoloration of taj mahal mainly is because of the sulfur which is present in the rains because of the acid rain overall next 80th question is on pesticides the biological or chemical agent that kills the animals and plant pest is nothing but pesticide this is this is the classic definition and this includes herbicide insecticide insecticide means generally it will kill insects the nematicide the mulicide the pesticide the avicide avicide the rodenticide the bactericide insect repellent animal repellent microbicide the fungicide and lampricide so these are the various uh, uh, various uh, pesticides the algicides that are basically to kill and slow the growth of algae and you have the concept of biomagnification which we just discussed generally there will be concentration of a toxin like pesticide in the tissue of the tolerant organisms and this keeps on increasing while this food transfers from one tropic level to higher tropic level and you have the bioneem which is based on azadichitin isolated from the kernels of neem se- neem seeds and this is most effective econ- economic and uh, lasting control over major pests it is more most environment friendly highly biodegradable and leaves no residue on the food stuff so bioneem is extremely helpful next 81st question is on mulching so mulching is nothing but covering of the open surface of the ground by a layer of external material this external material which is used to cover the ground is the mulch it is beneficial in yard garden yard gardening containers and raised beds of home gardens 
it may be permanent example the plastic sheets or temporary like the bark chips it is applied to bare soil or uh, around the existing plants now it has various benefits as well the benefits are uh, the shading it reduces the loss of soil moisture reduces the loss of soil moisture reduces rain splash and that reduces the pathogen dispersal the wind and rain induced soil erosion is reduced there is continuous addition of organic matter to the soil because it's organic matter in fact converts into humus and this is very very important for the plants the weeds are suppressed the the cover also protects the crops at seedling stage soil temperature is also maintained these are the various advantages or benefits of mulching that is covering of ground with certain amount of uh, these external materials next 82nd question is on air prevention control of pollution act of 1981 this provides for prevention control and abatement of air pollution in india the act states that the central pollution control board which is constituted under the water prevention and control uh, act of 1974 shall without prejudices to exercise and perform its powers and function under the act and uh, access power and perform function of this central pollution control board for prevention and control of air pollution under this act that means the central pollution control board which is created under the water act will also work for the control of air pollution under this air prevention and control of pollution act so cpcb originally is created under the water act but after this air prevention air control uh, air, air uh, uh, pollution control act this will also the central pollution control board also will control the air pollution the central pollution control board provides the technical services to ministry of environment forest and climate change with regard to the provisions of environment protection act of 1986 as well the principal functions as per the water act if you see the water act and air pollution act if you see it is to promote cleanliness of streams and wells in different areas of the states by prevention control and abatement of water pollution next to improve the quality of air and to prevent the control or abate of air pollution in the country the national air monitor program on the other hand this is basically set up to determine the present air quality status and to regulate pollution from the industries and other sources and to meet air quality standards it provides background air quality data for industrial and town planning the pollutant in the atmosphere by ship aircraft do not come under this act remember this pollution in atmosphere by ship or aircraft will not come under this act next 83rd question is on alluri sita ram raju so he is a freedom fighter from andhra pradesh he is an indian revolutionary he waged armed campaign against the british he was born in andhra pradesh so he opposed the 1882 madras forest act and because this 1882 madras forest act in fact restricted the tribal rights it restricted the movement of the adivasis in the forest and prevented them from practicing their traditional form of agriculture known as podu which is nothing uh, uh, similar to that of this shifting cultivation this played a major part so th- this uh, person alluri sita ramaraju he played a major part as the leader in the rampa rebellion of 1922 this is a ma- this is a famous rebellion just remember it from history point of view so he engaged in he was engaged in guerrilla campaigns against the british authorities in the border regions of madras Madras Presidency, which is part of the districts of East Godavari and Vishakhapatnam, and which is now called as Alluri Sita Ramaraju district, he got nicknamed as Manyam Virudu, that means hero of jungle, by local vir- villagers for his heroic exploits. You all of you might have seen the movie RRR by Raj Mohan. So, the character of Ram Charan in the movie is the character of Alluri Sita Ramaraju, though only inspiration and name was taken. the entire character was changed in the movie uh, allur sita so ram rajo basically he is a police but normally outside he is not a police so they have taken that sim- cinematic liberty but the character is the same next 84th one is ecological pyramid so ecological pyramid is the graphical depiction to illustrate relation between different living organisms at different tropic levels in the sorry at different tropic levels in the ecosystem this is of three types ecological pyramid of three types first per- pyramid of number the pyramid of number shows the total number of individuals present in each tropic level but this is inverted this is inverted in case of a tree next pyramid of biomass 
total number of organisms in a tropic level this is called biomass so total number of org uh, organisms mass if you see so this is also inverted in case of aquatic uh, organisms so you have the pyramid of energy this is upright pyramid this is always upright it illustrates flow of energy from producers to consumers how much energy is required in the next tropic level as it flows upwards so as it flows from one tropic level to the next tropic level it determines the amount of energy flow uh, it also uh, it also tells us how much energy is required in the next tropic level as it flows from one tropic level to other okay so like this when it flows from one tropic level to other what is the energy that is required that is told by this in most ecosystems in most ecosystems all pyramids are upright the producers are more in number and the biomass than herbivores and herbivores are more in number and biomass than uh, carnivores plus the energy at lower tropic level is always more than the higher but pyramid of biomass in c is inverted as i just told the pyramid of biomass it is seen in the aquatic re aquatic region because the biomass of the fishes far exceeds the biomass of the phytoplankton that's why it is inverted but pyramid of energy is always upright next 85th question is on invasive species invasive species basically are the non native species these species are they are not native to an ecosystem but they come and damage the entire ecosystem that is called as an invasive species these species are introduced unintentionally or intentionally for some specific reason okay but the but uh, these species they in fact uh, damage the entire ecosystem the nile perch introduced in lake victoria in east africa led to extinction of species of chichlid fish in the lake similarly the invasive weed species like carrot grass lantana and water hyacinth damage the native species in india the illegal introduction of african catfish the clarias garipnus for, for aquaculture is posing threat to the indigenous catfish in our rivers the euglandia rosea and the tasmania brushtail possum they are uh, they are also one of the most important ones next 86th question is on extinction when species are diminished because of the environmental forces so that is called as uh, uh, extinction they are getting diminished because of them both human that is uh, man as well as uh, the natural causes the habitat fragmentation natural disasters over exploitation for human use all of these things in fact they are reducing the number of number of this particular species example dodo in mauritius the quagga in africa thalassin in australia stellar sea cow in russia and three species uh, the bali javan and the caspian tiger they are they are on the watch some of the animals that have gone extinction in recent times the pink headed duck himalayan quail japanese sea lion guam flying fox caspian tiger yangtze dolphin passenger pigeon quagga the golden toad west african black rhino and the javan tiger they got extinct in recent times just remember these things okay next 87th question is on caspian summit so during the soviet times the caspian sea was entirely you can say it's an inland lake in the soviet but uh, now as the soviet union got disintegrated the caspian sea belongs to various countries so the countries which are part of or which are around this caspian sea they organize a summit that is called caspian summit recently it was held at ashgabat on 29th of june 2022 presidents of russia azerbaijan iran kazakhstan and turkmenistan they discussed about the issues of cooperation in the caspian sea with respect to various spheres plus the implementation of the resolutions made in the previous meeting next 88th question after the caspian summit we have poem p o e m which is the pslv orbital experimental module PSLV orbital experimental module. So, what is this? Is basically, as we all know, the PSLV, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, is a four-stage vehicle. Four-stage vehicle. Okay, the solid, liquid, solid, liquid. These are the four stages. So, last we have the liquid stage. So, in the last stage, you know, we will have this triangular one. So, this is how a rocket will be. Okay, one, two, three, and this is the fourth stage. So, generally, this fourth stage will have the payloads. and this payload generally it will be uh, or the satellites which are there in this payload they will be placed in the space 
now what they try to do is they try to uh, make this fourth stage as a complete orbiter that is the experiment that they have done the poem has navigation guidance and control system for attitude stabilization controlling orientation of any aerospace vehicle with, uh, within the permitted limits it lacked a platform brain to stabilize it with specific accuracy for the first time the P the a PSLV stage 4 would orbit the earth as a stabilized platform so this fourth stage entire stage itself uh, is now orbiting around the earth the poem will derive its power from the solar panels mounted around the ps4 tank and the lithium ion battery that it has it will navigate using four sun sensors and the magnetometer the gyro and navic this is about poem PSLV orbital experiment module next 89th question is on bio pesticides the pesticides which are made up of these uh, natural uh, materials that is called as bio pesticide this bio pesticides these, uh, these help these help in the control of these pests in plants they are of two types the bio herbicide they are the living organisms that destroy the that um, basically uh, stop stop these organisms that destroy the herbs there are many insects that feed on specific weeds or microorganisms and they cause diseases in the, in the weeds example micro herbicide the coquinal insect the pyrith the pyrithrum all of them come under this you also have these bio insecticides which are natural enemies of particular insect and certain other substances that are used for killing and repelling insect pests in a particular area so bio herbicide is basically to kill those organisms which kill the herbs and bio insecticides basically are the ones which will kill the insects that harm the plants next sites the 90th question is on sites the convention on trade international the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna it ensures that the international trade in the species of wild animals and plants that do not threaten the survival of the species it was drafted as a result of resolution adopted in 1963 at a meeting in the IUCN World Conservation Union and this sites it is legally binding on all parties does not take place does not take place of uh, national laws the site secretariat is administering is administered by the UNEP and located in Geneva it has three in appendices appendix one is for endangered ones appendix two is the species that don't face extinction at present but may become uh, so unless the trade is controlled appendix three includes at the request of any party the species will be placed under this because they will need protection and that needs cooperation from other members next the 91st question is on mission shakti scheme so mission shakti if you see recently uh, the guidelines were released by the ministry of women and child development this will be implemented from 1st of april 2022 it is a it is scheme basically was it, it will be in uh, place during the 15th finance commission period that is 2021 20, 22 to 25 26 and this mission shakti is an umbrella scheme for safety security and empowerment of women it has two sub schemes first is sambal sambal is for safety and security of women and samarthya for empowerment of women safety security you have sambal and empowerment you have samarthya so sambal consists of one stop center women helpline beti bachao beti padao and new components of the nari adalats women collective uh, the women's collectively uh, facilitate these alternate dispute resolutions and uh, this will ensure gender justice it will be implemented as central sponsored scheme with 100% central funding from the nirbhaya fund and uh, the ministry of women and child development fund next the samarthya samarthya consists of the ujwala swadhar grah and uh, the working women's hostel ujwala consists of all of these things okay and also sorry Ujwala, Swadharbhu and Working Women Hostel and this also the Samarth also includes the National Crash Scheme for Children of Working Mother and PM Matra Vandana Yojana under this the new component of gap funding for economic empowerment is included under this gap funding it will be implemented as a centrally sponsored scheme with funding ratio 60-40 between center and states and in the northeast that means in the special category states 90 is to 10 Next 92nd question is on AI based tool pivot. AI based tool pivot is launched by IIT Madras researchers. 
it can predict the cancer causing genes in an individual based on machine learning model that classify genes as tumor suppressor genes oncogenes and uh, neutral genes it was able to predict both the existing oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes like the tp53 the pic3ca among the others and new cancer related genes like prkca sox9 and psmd4 so pivot is a ai based tool by iit madras remember this it can predict cancer causing genes next 93rd question is on hibernation and diapause hyper this is these basically are to deal with the external environment conditions and maintain homeostasis the organisms in such habitat they cope with the stress by different mechanisms many if unable to migrate from harsh conditions and avoid and they're not able to avoid the stress so they will go under the hibernation example bears go into hibernation in winters some snail and fish go into aestivation to avoid the summer related problems of heat and desiccation under unfavorable conditions many zooplankton in lake and ponds enter diapause a stage of suspended development that means they won't develop so during this hibernation most of the time these animals will be in the state of sleep and all next 94th question is on tree shrew the sivatu sivatu paya ramnagir so just a second sivatu paya ramnagrensis vadia institute of himalayan geology an autonomous institute of the department of science and technology they found fossil of a new genus and species of tree shrew known as sivastupaya ramnagrensis that is a fossil of small mammals resembling squirrel from middle miocene site of ramnagar in jammu and kashmir they represent oldest ro- oldest record of the fossil tupids in shivaliks extending their time range by 2.5 to 4 million years in the region and can provide more precise age estimate from the ramnagar locality lying in the udampur district in jammu and kashmir next 95th question is on sustainable development so this is described by the birdland commission in 1987 as a development that needs the that meets the need of present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs the four dimensions are there society environment culture and economy the strategies for sustainable development if you see use of non conventional sources of energy the uses of cng biocomposting solar power through the photovoltaic cells lpg gobar gas in rural areas the wind power mini hydro plants these are the ones next 96th question is on adaptation also already we have discussed this 97th question is on montreal protocol on substances that deplete ozone layer it is a multilateral environment agreement regulates the production and consumption of 100 ozone depleting substances signed at montreal in 1987 multilateral fund for implementation of montreal protocol the activities are implemented by unep undp un industrial development organization and world bank plus bilateral agencies of non arctic countries sorry non article 5 countries non non article 5 countries the parties reached agreement on 28th meeting of parties in kigali to phase on the hfcs the hydrofluorocarbons they agreed to add hfcs to the list of controlled substances and approve a timeline for gradual reduction by 80 85% by 20, by the late 2040s developing countries will follow the freeze of hfc consumption in 24 and 28 for some nations so montreal protocol if you see it is for the ozone depleting substances and not climate change remember this montreal protocol 98th question is on standing crop standing crop if you see it is the mass of living organism or the number in a unit area or the total amount per the total amount or weight or energy content of organisms in specific area at particular time biomass is expressed in terms of the fresh or dry weight measurement in terms of dry weight is more accurate next tropic level the organisms that occupy place in natural surrounding based on the source of their food producer if you see the first tropic level that is that is uh, the producer the herbivores the primary consumer at second the carnivores or secondary consumer at third so this is the tropic level so organism generally 
uh, how they will be in the environment their role in the environment basically determines where they will be placed in the tropic level okay so at the first level as i said you have the herbivores because they are the producers or you can say at the first level you have the plants because they are the primary producers after that you have uh, the herbivores these herbivores consume these plants they are the primary consumers at the third level you have the secondary consumer the birds fishes wolves and at the fourth level you have tertiary consumer like the man lion so this is the entire this is the entire uh, tropic level okay so these are the questions for the day we will meet again in the next lecture and uh, we will look at the next set of questions from the next test till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind